12 years of Sister Reach, 12 years of providing reproductive and sexual justice advocacy for our community, 12 years of advancing human rights, 12 years of being there for women and teens of color, poor and rural women, LGBTQIA people and their families, 12 years of educating, of encouraging, of advocating for reproductive and sexual autonomy. 12 years of empowering the people we work with to live in healthy and sustainable communities. 12 years of serving Tennessee, and we're just getting started. Thanks for being here to help us celebrate this very special milestone. So voting against Amendment 1 for me is very important because when I think about the women that we serve, which are women and girls of color, and the fact that women and girls don't have the full range of access to reproductive health care. Um, we have not expanded Medicaid in our state. We have a problem with rape and sexual assault in our state. We don't have full range access to comprehensive reproductive and sexual health education in our state. We need the full range of options and that includes access to abortion. So my name is Sharice Scott and I'm voting no on one because if we let it pass, we lose. There's this myth that, you know, Planned Parenthood folks stand on corners and like lure you in, but that's not true. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know about a Planned Parenthood, right? So I looked into the yellow pages, need an abortion, call us. I called. I was met there by an older white woman who asked a series of questions, first of all, that I thought were a bit offensive. She asked me, was I on welfare? And I was like, no. Um, she asked me, you know, was I low income? Was I, you know, what, you know, what type of employment did I have? I worked full time. I was a paralegal at the time. So she tried to talk me out of uh, having an adoption, excuse me, having an abortion and, and talk me into having a, an adoption. She wanted to show me a video uh, so I can learn more about the procedure that I was trying to get. And so for the next I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour or so, I sat through procedure after procedure after procedure of baby's heads being crushed. Uh, and then after that, she comes in and she asked me again if I want to have an abortion. And I was like, I mean, that was scary, but yes. And so then they sent me to this clinic, like way up on the north side. I thought I was finally going to get the abortion. Um, you know, I didn't have any reason to believe I wasn't at a clinic. So the nurse told me when I got the ultrasound that I was about 12, 13 weeks pregnant, um, and that if I had an abortion, it would cause me to have my uterus perforated and I wouldn't be able to have any children. You know, by the time I got through the second procedure of going through like an ultrasound and this woman telling me that I might not be able to ever have a kid and me asking her, okay, so the, I, well, I, I'm good, I want to have an abortion. Oh, we don't do abortions here, honey. <laughs> I just was like, so, so where the hell am I? I felt so betrayed, but by that same token, that had given them enough time to plant enough seeds in my head. Um, and, and the biggest seed was I was not going to be able to have another kid. For me, that was like, that was the deal breaker. Um, I didn't realize that that was a lie. I did not realize that I had been tricked uh, and I did not have any idea that I would be walking into somewhat of an ambush. Uh, that I would, you know, walk into something where I would be tricked uh, into, and, and not only tricked, but somewhat shamed uh, and manipulated into making a decision that I did not want to make. Stop the pettiness. Stop the respectability politics. Stop the divisiveness. Stop the co-optation. Stop the sabotaging. It is time to lean in with integrity like never before and step up together. Now is the time to access freedom and liberation together. And this will not happen overnight. However, time is of the essence to intentionally and strategically merge our collective power, leveraging our individual and collective privilege Together, together, can we do this work together? For what? Can we do this work together? 
Many of you who claim to be the conservative and Christian have weaponized the word of God to forward your political agendas and maintain power and control over the most vulnerable Tennesseans. You've manipulated biblical scripture to align with your colonialist, supremacist ideologies instead of showing mercy and using that's, the power of your political party your, your to liberate each of us. Your time which is, is up. That I have sat Would here her out and room? I have watched you all allow people to talk and talk. But you won't allow me to talk as a Christian because I disagree with the way that you believe. We have to trust folks to be the experts of their own lives and understand that they have an idea of what they need to do to get out of their circumstance. What they are lacking are the tools. By having black women do research regarding black women, I think the story will, will be interpreted more accurately than historically. They need to be treated as SUD patients. They need to be treated as human beings that have substance use disorder. I think it's definitely important that we kind of stay at the front lines of this research. Sister Reach is the first reproductive justice organization formalized in the state of Tennessee. Uh, we work from a three-pronged strategy of education, policy and advocacy, and culture change work. Um, we work to forward the reproductive justice and human rights of uh, women and teens of color, poor folks, rural folks, gender non-conforming people, uh, including LGBT people and their families. And we have been doing that work now for almost eight years in the state of Tennessee. Perception, but they can at least talk about what a black experience in the area looks like. Oh, it's very um, important to spread awareness, especially in the Bible Belt. We grow up where we don't really talk about our bodies. We really don't talk about sex. It's a very taboo thing in 2019, even though we see it on TV all the time. But I think it's important that we spread awareness and knowledge to let people know of the access that they truly do have. A lot of people just don't know. That's what Sister Reach has been doing. We have been working to center those who are most vulnerable, lift up their voices, making sure that lawmakers know, medical providers know, the community at large knows, and so that we can have a bit better compassion about the ways that we do it. The You, Me, and HIV campaign is uber important to me. First and foremost, the hashtag is finally the focus is on black women. And as a black woman who is thriving with the HIV diagnosis, finally is the time to focus on black women. Long enough we have been good enough to do the work, but have not been able to sit down and benefit from the works of our work. So this campaign allows us to be centered in HIV, commercial, collateral, messaging, but also bring it to attention of black women who are both negative and positive, how it is important to take notice about this epidemic that's running rampant throughout our community. Centering ourselves first when it comes to self-care, but also making sure we put our sexual health first, foremost, and paramount before any and everybody else. And that's why the You, Me, and HIV campaign is important to me. Sister Reach has been a treasure for our community. They have provided vital resources and assistance to the families here that they couldn't really get anywhere else. Providing them with a food pantry and clothing pantry and providing them with reproductive health care assistance and education, and especially comprehensive sex education, which we really need here in our community. Like people say, when you know better, you do better. So being able to have someone mentor me and teach me, it taught me not only to be a young adult, but it molded me into a great parent for my child. I look at Miss Sharice like a mom. She's my second mom. She's not gonna be judgmental at all. It may be a little bit harsh, but if those words weren't harsh to me, I probably would have made a lot of mistakes, so those harsh words kept me from making a lot of mistakes. And I thank Sister Reach for that, me and my daughter. And in the past few years, we've taken even greater strides to positively impact our community 
with events and initiatives such as our Faith Advocacy and Religion Symposium, Pearl's Pantry, You Meet HIV, and many, many more. I came to Sister Reach at a time where I was hemorrhaging. I needed someone to speak life into me. I needed to hear the message of abundance and hope in a way that I've never heard it before. I'm so delighted that you guys offer this service because it means a lot. There are so many ways that people don't have a way to talk to anybody, nor do they have any idea of who to go to. And you guys make it very easy. Plus, you always offer beautiful things that are available so that people can take advantage of them. But this is just the beginning. As we look to the future, we envision a world where everyone's voice is heard, where every person's health and dignity are protected, and where love and support are readily available for all. We won't stop until that vision becomes a reality. Thank you for being part of our journey, for believing in our mission, and for standing with us as we reach out to embrace a brighter future.